So guys, I have a Zoll battery that died. Correction, I have 12 Zoll batteries that died. That's expensive. So what happened? Well, they didn't die like this. These batteries are from mid 2021 and come to find out, even though they're sitting on the shelf, they have to be plugged in every so many months because it's got a very interesting circuit inside the battery which is designed to fail that's the only way to put it so let's go ahead and take a look inside this battery and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about so here you go guys these are the remnants of a teardown so these batteries are heat sealed around the top and inside are some 18650 cells. They're in a parallel series configuration, three different cells. So here's one cell in parallel, two, three, right there in series. And uh, the cells right now are measuring all completely together 0 0.07 volts. This is normally a 10.5 volt battery. How does it get the 0 0.7 volts? That makes no sense whatsoever, or does it? In comes the BAC. This is the battery maintaining circuit, or the battery analysis circuit, whatever you want to call it. It's the charge controller. It keeps track of things like temperature inside the battery. Um, it also has service lights right here that give you a percentage of battery charge. And there's a CPU on a daughter board that's here on the back. You see it? This guy right here, I believe, is the problem. So what I think happens is this CPU is constantly running off these batteries. It has to be plugged in every so many months or maintained after every so many months because if you don't, then what's going to happen is this guy's going to continue to run to fail. Now normally there'd be a battery safe circuit on many of these BACs. So if it gets to a certain point, it disconnects the battery cells from anything else and you're safe. Because these cells here can only get to a certain percentage and once you get past that percentage, there's permanent damage to the batteries. So what happens is this guy here will get below the threshold and when it gets below the threshold, it, the charger no longer wants to handle it, so it counts it as a bad battery, which is this guy right here. It'll be the question mark right there. Or nothing at all, which for me, it was nothing at all. This battery has never been used. It was on a uh, shelf waiting to be sold. And come to find out, this guy here has got like a battery depletion circuit where it will continue to run until it drains the battery completely out. To which point, then it's well below the threshold for the charger and it's just gonna register red or nothing at all. But um, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Right here's the button that activates the battery uh, charge detect. These guys right here are uh, a couple of current sensing resistors. They call them also shunt resistors. They're uh, 0 0.0 Let's see if I can get it in frame. There we go. 0 0.02 of an ohm at 0.5%. So they're very specific. And shunt resistors are used to detect current because all things have a uh, voltage drop across them. So if I were to run electricity across this guy right here, at a low voltage, there will probably be a low voltage drop. But as I increase the voltage, uh, and increase the current through here. When you increase current, you increase resistance. As you increase resistance, you are gonna have a bigger voltage drop from one side of the piece of metal to the other, which is basically what's happening here. So it measures current by basing the, by detecting the amount of voltage drop from one point to the other as current's going through it. And as you're charging it, as you're depleting the battery, using it through regular use, it's monitoring for safety features or whatever 
um, but almost everything that has a battery has some sort of uh, BAC with current sensing and that's how they do it is through those shunt resistors right there so we got a uh, power circuit over here these here are um, what are those things MOSFETs anyway I looked them up and I can't even remember what they are anymore but uh, I was looking to see if there might be any sort of fuse or anything which I'm sure there's some built in but um, it just basically depletes the battery until nothing and it seems to be a design it's not a flaw they actually designed this so that if you have this sitting in your in your biomed shop or something waiting to go into the piece of equipment this will naturally just drain it down until it's nothing so that you have to buy more batteries they say it, it, it's a safety feature I'm sure that's how they're gonna advertise it but really what happens is it just wears it down so I've got 12 batteries with this exact same problem and because they're no longer good I took the opportunity to open it up and take a look at what's inside and this is what's inside a Zoll R series battery you wonder why it's five hundred dollars I'll tell you right now having such an advanced BAC uh, is going to definitely add to that price that's for sure but these are just generic not even expensive cells um, 18650 cells you can buy these for a couple bucks each so as you can see not very expensive uh, this is a lithium ion battery, not lithium poly polymer. So these here are individual cells that are spot welded. And this board here keeps track of the charge. And it also keeps track of temperature. And take a look what we have right here. I have a thermistor. So it keeps track of the temperature for multiple reasons. So it, it keeps track of the temperature also for when you're charging. So if it gets hot while you're charging, it knows to uh, decrease the amount of current going into the battery. But also when you're using the battery, during use, they also generate heat uh, because of resistance. And because they generate heat, it also will keep track of this, which can also save your battery here. So there's multiple reasons why you put thermistors in lithium batteries, but uh, there you go, that's it. The other lines coming out of this battery, you can see right here, I've got a blue line and a white line. And what those do is they come down and they monitor the individual cells. You can see that one is right there. So what, what that one's measuring is between this point and this point. So it knows that's the voltage of cell one. And then this one here is gonna be what, a blue wire? Yeah, probably a blue wire. So that's what they're doing. The blue wire comes here to the red wire, so that's that measurement. And then the blue wire to the white wire gives the measurement for the middle cell. And that's how you do balance charging. Because each of these cells has to be balanced individually. So they'll charge this one, they'll charge that one. If this one's up to value, you know, because basically uh, the batteries with the lowest resistance will get all the voltage, or all the current rather. So that's how you make sure that they're all at the same level and that's how you maintain your battery is balanced charging. So kind of cool. You can see right here how the, uh, the lines go between the cells. So normally these would be uh, 3.6 volts. So um, by putting them in parallel like this, three of them in parallel, all you're doing is you're increasing the milliamp hour of the cell. So uh, if I were to measure between here and here, I'd get 3.6 volts. Between here and here, 3.6. Here and here, 3.6 volts. Um, but the milliamp hours, by adding more of them in parallel, you're increasing the milliamp hours or the, you know, the runtime of the battery. Uh, increasing them in, uh, by putting them in series increases the voltage level of the battery. So 3.6, 3.6, 3.6, 10-point something, you know. Anyway guys, that's just one of those things that was aggravating. Uh, it's, it's always aggravating to take a loss, but uh, I wanted to tear into it and see exactly why are these batteries failing. And it's extremely aggravating. I'm sure someplace there is written in literature that they have to be maintained every two or three months. I'm pretty sure it's, got, it's probably written someplace, but at the same time, you control the obsolescence of the battery by you know, this guy right here. 
if it's got a clock in it or something after a certain period of time it just uh, disconnects it or it, it continues to run the battery down past the safe level I don't know how they do it but uh, there's 12 batteries at 400 and some dollars each that have to get replaced go figure <laughs> anyway thanks for watching guys